Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I want to talk about knock sensors. Uh, a lot of guys have a little bit of a confusion on what knock sensors do, what their function is, whether they should come in or not. So hopefully this video explains a little bit about what the knock sensors function is and you know kind of how they work. So let's say you get a bone stock Mustang, 11 to, 11 to 17, and the moment you drive it off of the lot, I guarantee there's 87 octane in that bitch. Why? Because dealerships don't put premium in it unless they're fucking odd as shit. I mean, it's really rare to see a dealership put, you know, 91, 93 octane in a Mustang. 90% of the time they tell the sales guy, hey, after you're done with your donuts and putting up balloons, go and take the car and uh, get it filled up uh, at, you know, at Kroger because it's cheap as shit and put 87 octane in it because this customer just paid $43,000 for his premium Mustang. So, sure enough, when you drive it off of the lot and you go wide open throttle the first time, I guarantee the knock sensors are slammed, yanking six degrees. Fuck! You know, you're wide open throttle and the knock sensors are like, nope, bitch, you are not getting all that, all that spark because you have 87 octane in it. And have you ever noticed that after you drive it off of the lot, it's a little soft, and then when you put 93 in it and drive it two or three drive cycles, you know, two or three tanks, it gets better and better and better, right? That's because the knock sensor is interfering less and less and less in a stock calibration. So what do you do? You go out there and you want to get a tune, okay? You get a tune from a company, naturally aspirated, and then you start driving it, oh, it feels way better. Then they ask you to data log. Then you start becoming aware of the knock sensor. You, you know, the, 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 the tuner probably says, hey, you know, your knock sensors are coming in a little, so, you know, do you have better quality gas? And you go like this, what's a knock sensor? Is it gonna explode? See, a little YOLO came out. He's coming out eventually, it's just, takes time. Uh, so you say, what do you mean? What do you mean no my knock sensors are coming in? Tuner says, well, you either have garbage gasoline in it or you have some kind of false knock issue. And you're like, no, 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 it's a bone stock car. Okay, then you have really crappy gas and he will suggest you put octane booster in it. And that's when you start freaking out about knock sensors. That's when you start doing research online. You go to your computer and you put fucking, you start slamming on the computer and you're like, what are knock sensors? Is my car knocking? Is it going to explode? Oh my god, my tuner sucks. Then you go to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and every social media on the planet, and ask about the knock sensors and how your tuner sucks. That begins the misinformation campaign. Remember, stock calibrations pull back timing. So, you guys got to realize that even in stock form, these knock sensors are working. Have you ever looked at the brochures? Have you ever even looked at the owner's manual on the Mustang? and notice that there are two different power ratings for different fuels. That's right, there are two different power ratings for two different fuels. If it says 91 or 87 octane, it's like 412 horsepower. If it's 93, it's like 430. <gasps> How is that possible? Because the knock sensors are not gonna pull as much timing on 93 than they can on 91 or 87. That's right, they are active. So even in stock calibrations, they come into play. So when you get a tune and get a little bit well-versed as to what knock sensors are, you start opening up your data log on Excel. Let me, let me do that real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up a data log on Excel. And, you know, I'll show you guys what you guys are going to be seeing versus what we'll be seeing. Okay? Boom. Here you go. So when you open up a data log in Excel, this is what you see. Holy shit, oh my god, look at this, this is a freaking mess, exactly. And then you're gonna go line by line, one, and look for, oh, there it is, the knock sensor came in 0.5. Tuner, fix my tune, my knock sensor's coming in 0.5. How about you do this? Now that you've learned how to look at a data log on Excel, revert back to stock, put 91 octane in it, and go wide open throttle, and see how Ford is tuning the car, because I guarantee it's gonna pull back Three, two, or six if you have really crap gas. So again, guys, do not focus on the minutia. And if you trust your tuner, listen to what he says. If your car is only kicking back one and a half degrees, one degree, big deal. In a boosted car, if it's doing that, it's more than likely uh, fuel quality. Uh, if you don't have a catch can in the deal, if you don't have a catch can in a boosted car, something's wrong with you. You need to capture that oil before it gets into the blower or the throttle body. I have seen GT500 throttle bodies coated in oil in stock form and the knock sensors i'm sure we're pulling it all back so again guys don't really go crazy on the knock sensor stuff now when you see knock sensors on a data log and it says negative that is adding timing negative knock think about it negative knock 
okay? It's like, uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna go into the math, but basically, negative knock is a good thing, positive knock is not a bad thing, unless it's like 10, unless it's like, you know, five and up, or four and up, you're like, okay, sums up, detonation, what's going on? So what will the tuner suggest? If the tuner's not commanding a bunch of timing, he's gonna say, well, we gotta see what's going on, whether it's suspension, whether it's this, this or that, okay? Have you ever heard the term false knock? Yeah, you you know you hear all, all the time, I'm sure. And I'm sure you guys roll your eyes. Oh my God, my tuner just doesn't want to you know, take care of the issue. Well, how else will we take care of the knock sensors going off if you want it at zero or at negative? We either pull back timing, which you're gonna say, no, 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 I want all the power. We're gonna suggest better gas. You're gonna say, but I'm running Kroger 92. Or uh, we desensitize them and I'm not gonna touch the settings. I'm not gonna touch the settings. I'd rather they protect and do their job. But a lot of the layman's out there are going to just start chirping, talking, and they don't even want to check the fact that they put in solid motor mounts, some solid suspension, and it, the car is super stiff and rattly, and it might make the knock sensors go off. So again, guys, get educated as to what knock sensors do in stock calibrations. The knock sensors come in big time if the gas is junk, and there are even two different horsepower ratings for two different type of fuels direct from Ford. The knock sensors are there to protect if it's knocking one degree, ride the fuck out brother it should be good now for you layman's that are looking at data logs in excel and are getting good at reading them you understand that's half of the story when you look at a data log that's what the car is doing you do not know what the car is commanding aka the tune so unless you have both the tune and the data log so you can compare one with the other you're only getting half the story Hopefully this answers a lot of your questions on knock sensors and why they're there. And if it knocks 1.2 1 degrees, that's okay because in stock calibrations, they can knock back six. Thanks a lot, guys. More tech shit coming up. Throttle bodies, talking shit. And hopefully I can educate the public as to little, little by little what knock sensors do and uh, normal Mustang functions. Thanks for watching.